Okay, just go ahead. Okay. Yes, so as, as we said, just to, to say it again, the, the maintenance approach when we go to an old project is to look on a few different aspects. First is the functionality of the project to see if it's working, if it's providing water, if everything is, is operating uh, properly and the community benefits from the water. So it's the, the functionality branch. Second branch is the aesthetics to see how it looks, uh, if, if there are any aesthetical uh, adjustments that we need to, to do. And third and very important as well is the structural assessment. So if the, the, the structures are very old or showing signs of maybe stability being compromised or any danger, we also need to assess it. Okay, so I think that the first two, the functionality is pretty much straightforward. When you go there, you see if the water are flowing, what is the pressure, if everything is working. And the second one is the aesthetics. And I, I think also Tanzania team is also experienced uh, with this part when you went to see the health centers. And also when we saw the latest uh, Axola projects that we were a little bit disappointed from the results of the aesthetics and we provided the feedback. So I think you're already familiar with this uh, section, how we want the, the, the projects to look like, but we need to be very careful when we talk about new projects and old projects. So new projects, you already know because most of the standards of aesthetics are actually coming from Tanzania, from the beautiful projects of Tanzania and the way that Axola uh, hand over a project. So you know very well how, how it looks. This is new projects now. We are not intending to go to an old project and bring it to a level of a new project in terms of aesthetics, right? So when you look into aesthetics, first is the observation. See how it looks and write it down and record it. And then we will make a decision what is more critical to be fixed in terms of aesthetics. Is it very critical? Do we have a donor visit coming? or any other considerations that we want to, to take into account. And then we make a decision, not all aesthetic issues will be attended because they are not so important. So let me break it down. I will, um, yes. Okay, so we said we have Getting it stuck. Yeah. So we have the functionality aspect. We have the aesthetic aspect. And then we have structural integrity aspect. Okay, those are the three main issues or main branches of topics that we want to look when we go to an old project. So for the functionality, we already said it's pretty much uh, straightforward. Okay, water are flowing, and water pressure, and tank being filled, etc. Okay, aesthetic, similar to the health center's assessment. Okay, considering that all the projects are not to be um, fixed to the level of aesthetics of a new project okay okay now i would like also to say that when we do any assessment we we, we make few actions like uh, core actions that we do 
okay? So the first one is observation. Okay, so, so um, recording and recognizing, excuse my spelling, I'm just writing fast, and recognizing any, any issues to be attended. Attended. So if it's uh, cracks, uh, stains, um, any other uh, uh, any other flaws? Efflorescence. I just learned that word a few months ago. Efflorescence. Yeah, we, we will get to that. Okay. Then uh, the recording is also an important action. Okay, it means that when you see something on site, you need to take into account that that someone else also need to understand and take and understand what's happening in this project. So you need to think how you record and how you uh, communicate what you see. So recording is very important, and also taking into account that your visit is probably one time visit and going back to the site only to take other measurements or other pictures is very, it's not efficient. So taking into account that you do one visit only for the assessment. So make sure you take a lot of pictures, dimensions, measurements, uh, notes, whatever you need to take, because once you take it back to the office, this is what you have and what you have in your memory, of course. So recording is taking uh, pictures, writing notes, uh, taking measurements where needed, uh, uh, concrete tests, Schmidt hammer, etc. Now take as much as you can. Okay. And then I think the final stage is is to to say that it's the the reporting. Okay, so it's creating a report, either it's a document or a slack or whatever we will decide. So it's creating a report to to make to to, to take uh, all your observations and recordings and and making a, a, a conclusion, okay? Creating a report to communicate the situation on site, uh, to be able to make conclusions and actions, action plans. Okay, so it's very straightforward. We go to the site, we take observations, we see what, what is, is, uh, is uh, not according to what we expect, if, if it's functional, if it's aesthetic, if it's structural, we, take, uh, we record the situation as much as we can and on the better side uh, that, we can, that we can because we do probably only one, one side visit and whatever you take is what, is what we're going to remember. And then when you go to, to create a report, you see all, all your observations and recording, put it in a report. And so we will be able to make conclusions and to, to take action plans of what we, what, what we should do. So I hope it's, uh, the intro is, uh, is, is clear. Let me know if you have any questions or notes so far. So far, your explanation is clear to me. Thank you. Okay. So I want to now talk about the structural integrity or the structural assessment. So I think this is the most maybe complicated or um, not so easy to understand uh, issue. The other two is, is straightforward. And the third one is more about the, the professional aspect of, of, of civil engineering. So this is for mainly for Ruangisa and Irene, but 
other team members, of course, they can help and, and help with the, with the assessment itself. So now I will show you a, an example. Okay, so before, before the, the example, what I want to show you, um, wait, Zambia. Okay, so for example, this is a site from Zambia called Chisulu. We went there and we saw the, the, the tower and we started to record the observations that we see. You see cracks, all, all kinds of cracks, measuring the cracks, um, some, some stains and efflorescence on, of the concrete, cracks on the slabs, Okay, more stains on, on, on slabs. Then we decided that this structure might be risky or the, the, the stability might be compromised. So we started to do the structural assessment. Now, when you go to a, to a project and you want to understand if, if it's uh, stable or if something is... is uh, might might tell you that the structure is not good is if you see cracks okay substantial cracks on 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 the structural elements if you see staining on the concrete like efflorescence or other other types of staining i want to show you what is an efflorescence Okay, so show you are familiar with this uh, phenomena. It's called the fluorescence. It's a chemical reaction happening in the concrete. And to some extent, if it's mild, it's okay, it's natural. But if it's extended and it's very uh, widespread, it might be a concern, okay? It's usually happening when the concrete is being uh, exposed to ponding to uh, ponding water or to a lot of water reacting with the concrete okay so if if the the structure is well drained and when it's rained the water are always flowing out it's supposed to be fine but when water starts ponding and sitting on one place it starts reacting with the concrete and 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 uh, making this uh, phenomena, okay? Now, if it's becoming extended and, and widespread, it can compromise the structural uh, stability of an element, okay? For example, if it's happening on a slab, okay, and it's pro propagating and, and spreading out, it can compromise the strength of the concrete or weakening the, the reinforcement steel that are inside the slab, okay? So this is one example. And of course, cracks, as we saw before in Chisolo, are also a, a sign that may say that we have a problem with the structure, okay? Now, um, now we're doing it via Zoom, but hopefully maybe in quarter two or in a few months, I will visit uh, Tanzania and we will be able to do it together. So now we're doing a very, very quick introduction, but. Structural assessment is, is a field by itself, okay? There are professionals doing only that. So now we're just going through the main, main uh, things. So we came, we came with a form or kind of a template that guides you through the process and should help you go with the assessment, okay? So now I will show the report. Juan Gisa, do you have any experience in structural assessment or this would be your first time conducting that? It would be my first time. Your first but, time. Yeah. 
Okay, not this one. Okay, so if we look at the tower, as you know, we have the structural elements and the non-structural elements. Okay, so the structural elements are columns, beams, and slabs. They are the skeleton of the structure. So when we look into structural stability, we want to look into the, these elements. If we see cracks or any other phenomena on block works or other things, it's less of a concern. It's mainly aesthetic. But if we look into structural elements, this is more critical for the stability of the structure. So everything, everything that we will discuss now is regarding structural elements like columns, beams, and slabs. Now, the sketch that you see here is a labeling or naming system for us to be able to label an, an element that we will be able to understand what we are talking about. If, if engineer Wangisa is going to the site and want to discuss or observe a specific beam or a specific column or a slab, you need to name it in a system that when someone else is opening your report, uh, we will be able to understand what element you are talking about. Okay, so this is the labeling system. Okay, so the SF is slab foundation, S1, the first suspended slab, the SLB, the load bearing slab, okay, the ST is the top slab. Now, regarding columns, you see that for columns, we have a letter and two numbers. Okay, so the logic behind it is, is as follows. I think I have a better scheme to show you. One second. Let me search it for one second. I think I have a better, better scheme. Uh, um, Excuse me one second, I want to find something better. Got it. Okay, so regarding the numbering system, uh, this is the same sketch that I showed you before. It's uh, it's hand uh, sketched by me, but I think it's, it better explains the system. Okay, so first of all, you need to understand where is the door. The door is 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 a reference point. Now we are counting count, counting clockwise to the door. Okay, by, by numbering each element. Now, each element 
has its own letter and two numbers. So the letter is saying if it's a column or a beam. Okay, if it's C, it's a column. If it's B, it's a beam. Now, the, the second, this number is the level index. What level are we? Is it level zero? Is it level one? Or is it level two? Okay, the second index is the direction index where we are standing in the tower. So let's do, let's do a, a, an example. If I'm saying that I'm talking about column two, two, okay? So I'm C saying, okay, I'm talking about a column, two telling me I'm on the top floor, okay? And the other two, telling me which one of the columns. So the other two will be this, this column because we are counting clockwise to the door. So if it's, this is the face of the door, the first column on this floor will be this one. You see, this one. And then I continue counting clockwise. Second one will be this one. The third one will be the column behind, and the fourth will be this, this column. Okay? Making sense, Wangisa, or should we do another, let's do another example. It is okay. Okay. So it's all here, the, the counting, the numbering, and the, 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 the logic behind the numbers. So I will send this in the Slack also. Okay. Okay, so this is the labeling system. This is what you're going to use for the, the report. Okay, so we have the template report with questions and tables for the Schmidt Hammer tests. Okay, so after you, you went to a site, you see a lot of phenomena on the structure and you're suspecting it's, it, the stability might be compromised, you're starting to, to do the structural assessment according to this template. So first thing is the dimensions of the elements, because a lot of old projects were not uh, uh, constructed according to, to the latest drawings or the latest standards. And you will find that the slabs has their, their own different thicknesses, columns, beams, all kinds of different dimensions for the structural elements, okay? So first we need to understand what is existing on site. What are the, the, the dimensions of the existing elements, okay? Now, I know it's hard to, to measure everything on the structure, but try to measure the representing dimension dimensions of the elements. So measuring few columns, measuring few beams and slabs. So we will be able to, to, to understand how the structure is, is being uh, constructed. Okay, so this is the table for the dimensions and you see that the elements names are according to the labeling system, columns, slabs, beams, and so on. You put the width, the length, the height, and any other comments if you have, okay? okay? Then after dimensions, we want to check the strength or to assess the strength, okay? This is why you have the Schmidt hammer. Sorry, one more thing about the dimensions. Remember now you have the laser meter, okay? So the laser meter should assist you in taking measurements. Okay, so use the laser meter and use the, the other traditional uh, uh, rulers and, and meters. Okay, Schmidt hammer tests, as you know, to, to test and to assess the concrete strength. Okay, um, the way to do a proper Schmidt hammer test is making at least, at least 10 samples for a, a, an area, for, for an element and then making an average, okay? Because if you take only one, 
one or two hits, uh, it doesn't represent the actual uh, the actual strength. So we need to do some kind of statistics. So you need to take 10 measurements and then make an average. So about the Schmidt hammer tests, please write a note that I've made a video, a tutorial video explaining Schmidt hammer completely. Okay, how to test, how to, to take samples, everything. Okay, so take a note for the Schmidt hammer. You can watch the video. I'm talking with Malawi team, but it's 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 correct for any other team. Okay. So you take your measurements of the Schmidt hammer, put it in the table. Okay. Okay, so next are cracks. Cracks are very important in the assessment. Okay, cracks are differentiated into two families. First family is cracks that we are not concerned about are aesthetical cracks. Usually they are very thin and sporadic, okay? They don't have a system. And this is maybe when the finishes are being uh, uh, dried out or, or other minor uh, phenomena that create those aesthetical cracks. The second family of cracks is structural cracks. These cracks are telling us that the structure is moving or becoming uh, unstable okay so structural cracks usually will be wider okay so structural cracks tell, tell me if you see the pictures that i'm sharing now you see the pictures no you see the pictures now You saw when I talked about the, the, the labeling system in, on the hand sketch? Yes, you that's what we saw, yes. All right. You see, for example, a, a structural crack, okay? So like a thumb rule, it's not a, a, it's not a rule from the Bible, okay? But a, a crack, a structural crack, identification okay now it's not the full course as i said structural assessment it's a profession but just few rules to notice okay width from 0 0.3 millimeters and above okay and direction and system systematical uh, appearance okay so width you understand if if the width is larger than 0 0.3 millimeter you start thinking if this is a structural crack how you measure it you you need to have calibers like this one in the picture they are available i guess everywhere and if not we will try to send a few from israel but wangisa they are available in, in hardware stores in Tanzania, right? The we caliber. To, we have to check. Okay, so please check and let me know because you need to have a caliber to measure those things, okay? Okay, so we're talking about the width. Now, second thing is the direction. Now, the direction and systematical appearance needs the observation of a civil engineer. And I will show you what I'm talking about. So uh, let me. OK, you see the PDF, the sketch? You see the sketch of the tower? Yeah. Let me know if you want me to stop, if you have any questions, comments. I know it's a lot of information, so let me know if you need a... No, you just continue. Okay. For me, it is okay. 
I really want you to, to be focused because it's, it's an important issue. Of course, I'm here to answer anything whenever you need, but this is the first introduction. Okay, so talking about the directions of the cracks, okay? So as you know, especially Wangisa and Irene, that you will see the video, let's, let's talk about statical sketch of a beam. Okay, if this is a beam, okay, and we have loads from the tank, from whatever, we have loads, right? We would expect that the beam want to bend, right? Because of the loads. Are we following? Yes. Okay, so if I have a beam, uh, if I have a beam with a, with a real height and real thickness, and the beam wants to bend due to loads, okay, if this is the, the, the bending moments, something like this, I would expect to see cracks maybe here, if the beam starting to fail, I would expect to see cracks here. I would expect to see cracks in these places, okay? Because those cracks are related to the moments and the bending uh, uh, schemes of this beam, okay? Now, if, if we see sporadic, uh, sporadic cracks and not consistent, so probably they are not uh, structural, okay? If I see something here, something there, and then small thing there, maybe it's not structural. But if I see it systematically and, appear and, and the appearance is, is in an engineering point, I would start to suspect, okay? Now slabs, okay? So if I'm looking at a slab from above, now I'm looking at a slab from above or from below, and I know that the load by the tank is working somewhere here, okay? So what I would expect to, to see Think, imagine you have a blanket, okay? You have, you have a blanket that you hold. Now you start to put oranges on the blanket, on the middle of the blanket. What the blanket wants to do? Wants to bend, to deform towards the loads, okay? Same as the concrete, although it's minor movements. So if the, con if the slab of the concrete is the blanket, and the load of the water is in the center, we would expect that the slab will bend towards the center. Now, the places where the slab is being held, is being supported, is by the columns and beams, okay? So as a reaction of the bend and the, and the, and the moments, we will start to suspect seeing structural uh, cracks here, okay? Systematically, something like that, okay? From the columns and the beams towards the center, okay? It's like stretching cracks. And of course, in the center. In the center, they will look like this, either straight or horizontal because in the center, the, 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 the slab wants to deform, okay? This is being recorded. You can go back through it and we will discuss it again once you start doing actual maintenance, okay? But it takes some experience and some, some engineering uh, uh, considerations when you look at cracks and, and trying to understand if there are structural cracks, okay? So I, I will be here to support you uh, with this matter, but what we discussed now are the general uh, general aspects. If you see them on site, 
you need to start taking uh, pictures and record it, and then we will discuss it together. Okay, so this is about uh, the cracks. I'm now I'm going back to the form. I need to delete all those. Um, Okay, so the third section talking about cr cracks, asking are there, cr are there any cracks? You can say, yes, I see some aesthetic cracks on the block wall. I see some uh, suspected uh, uh, structural cracks on beam number one, two or whatever. Okay, and then recording the width with the caliber and describing the location and direction of any significant crack, okay? Now, it's important to record it, so we will be able to think about it together and try to assess if this crack is concerning. Crack propagation, okay? Mark significant cracks with a marker. Okay, record it. This is th this D section, we will do it if necessary, okay, we will discuss it later. This is for future inspections. Okay, how you record cracks. We talked about the width, we talked about location, direction, and, and picture, okay? So it's a very fast training, but let's, let's do it, okay? How to record cracks okay so width location or element where is it it's beam it's beam one one in the center or maybe it's a column zero one at the top okay direction okay a diagonal to tank or a horizontal, vertical, etc. Okay, and then picture. Okay, now the picture must uh, tell us the scale of the crack. Okay, the picture must include the scale of the crack with reference meaning imagine what happens if if i take a, a picture of a crack without a, a reference it's very hard to understand the width of the crack let me show you an example this is a good example because it shows the width and you have the caliber in the picture and you have a hand in the picture so it's easy to understand what is the size of the crack? Okay. Now, if I take a picture, like, let's say, like a picture like this, okay, of, or, or a close up of a crack without any reference, it will be hard to understand if it's a long crack, if it's a small crack. So, whatever, whenever you take a picture of a crack, Try to put in the picture, maybe a pencil, okay? Maybe a caliber. So it's, it's, it's easy to understand what is the size of the crack other than your description in the report. Okay. Okay. Okay, first, the, the fourth uh, uh, chapter is the concrete quality. Okay, so concrete quality covers for any evidence for efflorescence, mold, or segregation. Okay, so mold, you know how it looks like, efflorescence we discussed, segregation when we talk uh, uh, segregation in concrete. Okay, it's when the, the ingredients of the concrete are being segregated according to the size, probably because they didn't use the vibrator properly 
or the, the mixture itself was wrong. And it looks like this. Let me find it. Okay. Seg segregation in concrete. Okay, so example, a good example of segregation in concrete will be something like this. Okay. Where you see the aggregates are being a, a voids between the aggregates, meaning that the particles were not a, a organized properly during casting. Okay, so this is an example of segregation in concrete. Okay, if you see this, you need to, of course, record it and put it into the report. Okay. I well, actually think that we're seeing a lot of this in Ndebwe. It's very interesting now to name it, but I think we did see it in one of the projects that the Wangisa is going to visit in the coming few weeks. Nice, nice. good observation, Hagal. So yes, so segregation will be a, a concern according to its, uh, of course, the extent of it and the location of it. Okay, if it's happening in the middle of a beam or in a column close to the joints, it, it might be concerning. Okay, if it's a small phenomena here and there, maybe it's not too bad. Okay, so we covered the, the A section of concrete quality. We talked about efflorescence, small than segregation. If yes, record the location and the extension of the phenomena, attach descriptive pictures. Cool. Okay. Any evident, any evidence of water ponding? Okay. So most of most of the those phenomena are all, also related to water ponding. So maybe you can see an evidence for water ponding. If it's during the, the, the rainy season, you can actually see water. If it's in the dry season, you can see marks of water, like puddles standing on, on the slabs. Okay, so if you see any evidence of, of water ponding, of course, uh, take a note and, and picture. Okay, this is about concrete. Now next will be the reinforcement. So when we talk about Structural elements integrity. We talked. We talk about concrete quality and, of course, the reinforcement quality. Now, the reinforcement assessment is much more challenging than the concrete because naturally the reinforcement is inside the concrete. It's not visible. It's very hard to understand what was being made into the element, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we do about reinforcement. First, we want to see if there are any evidence for exposed bars, okay? If you see a, con a concrete uh, column, you see a beam, you see slabs, and you can actually see the rebars, okay? It's a bad sign, okay? So if you see exposed rebars, you need to, of course, take pictures, describe the location, and then say, if you see the rebars are uh, rusted, Okay, how rusted are they? Very rusted, slightly rusted, okay? If possible, take a measurement of the diameter of the rebar that you see. Remember, you have the caliber to measure cracks, okay? And also you have a caliber to measure pipes. I know that the water department used that also. So with the same caliber, you can also measure the, the the diameter of the rebar, if possible, if, if you can access this, uh, this place. So we can know if the rebar was 8, 10, or 12, okay? So it's, it's easier to do back engineering, reverse engineering, and say, okay, this slab has Y8s or Y10s, and I can assess the strength. B regarding reinforcement is the cover thickness. Okay. If you saw an exposed rebar, you can assess the cover thickness. Okay. The cover thickness gives us a, 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 an, an idea of the sustainability of the rebars inside the concrete. 
Okay, chapter six or question number six is active loads and activity, meaning we want to understand how the loads are being implemented on the structure. Because if you see an old structure and the water system is not, is not working, okay, the structural assessment might not be relevant because the tank is never being filled. The tank is never full. So the loads are not being implemented on the structure, okay? So it's also important to understand the activity of the project. If the water are flowing, if the tank is being uh, filled regu regularly, if it's on only reaching uh, maybe half of the tank and then they use it, or if it's being fully, uh, fully loaded and so on. So those questions are regarding the activity. Do you have water regularly in the village? If not, what is the frequency of the water supplies? Okay. Or what are the hours of the of the taps are being opened? And does the, the, the water reach all taps? So those questions are also about the functionality. Okay. Based on the above questions, assess if the water tank load on the structure. Okay. So is it getting full? Is it never full? Is it half full? Okay, was full in the past and not anymore. Okay. So give your observations about uh, and the tank. Okay, so we will be understand the loads being implemented on the structure. And last part is the photos. So other than the pictures that we discussed, if you're taking pictures of cracks, if you're taking pictures of concrete efflorescence, whatever pictures you take, you, you need also to attach photos of reference, okay? Like a, a picture of the entire structure. So we can see the tower entirely, understand how it looks, okay? And maybe a few of them from few sides, okay? Maybe if you see a, a fluorescence on a slab, on a top slab, you can zoom and, and show the slab in the picture, okay? Photos of each structural crack with the scale, we talked about it, uh, uh, water ponding, efflorescence, pictures of the entire structural element uh, that is being depicted with the problem, okay? So let's say engineer Juan Gisa is, is saying in the report, I see a structural crack with uh, the, the width is uh, three millimeters. The direction is this and that on beam number one, two. Okay. And then taking a picture of the crack. It's good, but we also want to see the beam. Okay. So take a picture of the beam. Then we can see where the cracks are being shown in the entire beam, other than the specific pictures of the crack. Okay, so I think this is it. If you have any questions or comments so far, then I will summarize. Yeah, I think mostly about 90% you have been understood. I think we can start this exercise. Uh, of course, we really have to have a radar to access to, to various parts. Thank you, Engineer Juan Gisa. Uh, as I said before, I will say it again. I understand that this is a lot of information uh, through Zoom. And structural assessment, is it's a profession. And now we just touch based on critical things that you need to observe. So please go through the video. I, I, took, the, I took the notes and write the points that are important. I hope you also have your notes. Um, we also have the Schmidt Hammer tutorial that, that it's it's completing this session. So have a, have a look on the Schmidt Hammer tutorial as well. Make sure engineer Irene seeing this video also. And if you have any questions, clarifications, please let me know. Okay, I will try to help as much as I can from afar. And hopefully um, I will visit you 
maybe in this in the first half of 2023 and we will be able to practice this together on site okay yeah you're welcome maybe to add a little a bit about the operational perspective also Wangisa. So um, theoretically speaking, some of those questions that Moti raised in order to even see if there is an issue that we need to think about in a, in a project is part of the monitoring form. So theoretically speaking, when the field officers and the sampling team is going to go on site in this uh, quarter, they should be able to notify you Wangisa, we think you need to take a look at this project, which is exactly what I did now. I went to a project, I saw something that alarmed me, and I asked Moti, do we need to send Wangisa to see this project? So now you are going to for structural assessment after I raised a concern or she raised a concern. But after you feel more comfortable with this type of assessment, I would like us to also train the field officer who is going to be in charge of monitoring to alert you because you are not part of the regular monitoring visits and you are also moving to Kondoa and most of our projects are in Chamuino. So the field officers will have to be in a position that they can tell you, Papa, we think something is wrong here. You need to come to take a look. And then you do the structural assessment and you say, ah, this is actually just aesthetics or this is actually something that requires attention. Um, and at the moment, Shir and I noticed um, potential issues in Ndebwe. And in Ndebwe, there are two towers. So it's, there's actually the pump room and then two towers of 10 meter. So you actually need to take a look at all three of them, not only at where the tank is, because all of those structures are very old. And even though the pump room doesn't have a tank and doesn't carry load, I still want you to take a look at it to make sure everything is fine. For Mgondo, Shir noticed some alarming things, but we don't have a picture of the tank slab to say mm, Rwangisa needs to go here or not. So we are sending the field officer and the electrical engineer to review some other stuff in that project, and they will take a photo for you of the tank slab from below the ceiling. And then based on that photo, Moti will be able to say, should we send Rwangisa to Mgondo or should we not? And I think it will work this way um, throughout the coming month. As we visit old projects, we will determine if there is a need for you and Irene to do structural assessment for that project or not. Um, I also visited another project a few days ago, Ioli, which I had some concerns about. So I'm going to send the pictures now on our group, on the civil group on the Slack. And I will ask Moti to give us the feedback if you need to go and assess that as well or not, and how urgent that is, because Ioli is actually in Kondoa. It's a, our very first project in Kondoa from five years ago. So if there is a need to assess it, but it's not urgent, we will wait for you to relocate and then you will assess it. Okay? Okay. Good. Okay. Um, One more thing about the structural assessment. I want to, to show you some examples of structural assessment done in Zambia and Uganda. And another very important thing I, I want to show you. Imagine that you go to a site, you do a structural assessment, then we decide that it, it's in a matter of one or two days, we decide that the structure is dangerous, okay? What actions do we do? So we have few actions in our toolbox that I want you to understand. So the long-term solution will be to do some kind of structural uh, uh, bracings or reinforcements, okay? With all types of, of things that we can do, maybe steel, maybe concrete and so on. And this is more, it's taking time and this is less urgent and this is something that we can do. Sometimes we can decide to demolish and rebuild. It already happened once, okay? But it's very extreme solution. And the third solution is fast and temporary solution, okay? Using steel props. So if you see a structure and you decide, we decide that it's very dangerous and it can fall, the first thing we do is to put steel props to hold the tank, okay? How it looks, it looks like this, okay? 
steel props. I'm sure that you are uh, familiar with this because sometimes you can see them on site. So those are the steel props. You see, it's like temporary columns from steel and you can adjust the, the height and they can hold a lot of loads, okay? You see? Juan Gisa, you are familiar with this thing, I'm sure. Yes, yes. So we can use it as a temporary support if you, if you see and if you think that there is a structure that is very, very dangerous and critical. So we can put four props, four, four props in each floor. So in the in the in the pump room, and then four props or five props in the second floor to help the structure hold the load from the tank. Okay. Good. Okay. Um maybe maybe I will show you a few, just I want to show you how the forms were being filled by. Uganda team and Zambia team. So you will have a reference of how it should be done. Okay, so this is a structural assessment from Uganda. When the team climbs up, they use safety harnesses, of course, and trying to be a, as safe as possible. So also keep that in mind. You see, they do Schmidt hammer tests. Wangisa, do you have safety harnesses in Tanzania? They are available. Yeah. Sorry? They are available in Tanzania and we can purchase them. Yeah, we, so we, showed, we showed them in the conference. Ah, how, how you climb. So. so you should have them uh, available for your use, Wangisa. It's probably in the um, storage. So you should ask Viva or Lerian or Kelvin to assist you in finding it. Yeah. Okay, filling in the, the dimensions, table, filling in the Schmidt hammer tests, okay, the table. Okay, then of course answering the, the questions and taking pictures. Okay, this is in, in Uganda in the case where we didn't identify any, any concerning issues. Okay, now this is from Zambia. Same thing, same report, okay, uh, done by engineer Harry. Okay, taking pictures. Okay, so with this report, then we can do a joint discussion and decide if, if there's uh, any actions to be done, okay, any reinforcement any critical actions or, or not, no actions. This is what we hope for, okay? Yeah, I think this is it from the structural assessment part. I hope I covered everything. If you have questions, let me know.